So if you're tired of job hunting and you just want to start getting experience as soon as possible, we're about to talk about a hack that can likely 5x the speed at which you land that first cybersecurity or IT job. This strategy can be especially useful for cybersecurity because as you know, jumping into cybersecurity from zero can be pretty difficult. And before we get started, as usual, I'll be doing another $500 cash giveaway, so please check the pinned comment below for details. I'll be doing at least eight more of these this year, so if you don't want to miss out, subscribe and hit the bell. Getting right into the content, this comment is from a video where I was interviewing one of the students in my cybersecurity course. The student went through the course, increased their personal stats, expanded the job hunt region in which they were looking for jobs, and very quickly found a job in just a few weeks, three hours away, almost doubling their salary. So basically, as anticlimactic as it might be, the S tier strategy is to expand the geographic region in which you're willing to work, at least for your first job. The idea behind this is not that you're going to start a new life somewhere else or anything like this, rather you just want to find a job as soon as possible and start getting that experience as soon as you possibly can. Once you get that nice new job and start getting experience, all you have to do is update your resume, LinkedIn portfolio, etc. and then you can casually start looking for jobs back in your hometown or literally anywhere else you want with a much stronger resume. I know a lot of people are going to immediately write this off because moving is like kind of a huge pain in the ass and it costs money and all of those things. But I've actually done this a couple times in my life and the economics behind it can actually be really solid. So before we get too deep into the numbers, if you think about it, it intuitively makes sense, right? If you increase the rate at which you apply to jobs and you increase the geographic region in which you're willing to work, you're likely going to find a job sooner than you would otherwise. This is especially the case if you're choosing to apply to regions that are not necessarily tech hubs, but a few tech jobs just so happen to be there. There's a lot of areas in the United States that has the occasional need for tech talent, but those are places where tech talent doesn't want to live, if that makes sense. So consider somewhere like Oklahoma City, for instance. For sure, there's going to be less tech jobs there, but there's definitely going to be way less tech talent, especially compared to like Seattle or New York or San Francisco or something like this. There's going to be way less competition per application that you submit. A very simple example of this is, say you apply to a SOC analyst job in Seattle, Washington. Because there's so much competition, you might have a 1% chance of even getting an interview versus if you applied to the same job that just so happens to be out in the middle of Iowa in some rural town, you might have a 10% chance of getting an interview. This is just due to the fact that there's less talent living in the middle of Iowa and there's probably less people who actually want to live there as well. So it's kind of an economic advantage for you if you're willing to live in Iowa, at least temporarily. Expanding on this example a bit, if you submit 100 applications in Seattle, you might get one interview, versus if you submit 100 applications across a whole bunch of different flyover states, you might get 10 interviews. This is kind of a simplistic contrived scenario, but I think you get the idea that I'm trying to convey. So getting into the economics of why you would even consider doing this, it all boils down to time and money saved in the form of opportunity cost. Simply put, opportunity cost is the money that you are losing doing one thing when you could be potentially getting money doing something else. A very simple example of this is, say you live in Seattle, Washington, and it takes you four months to find a SOC analyst job that pays you 5k per month. However, if you expanded your geographic region and found an equivalent job immediately, you could have been making 5k for those four months and earned a total of 20k in the time it took you to even get that first job. So in this scenario, we can say that limiting the job hunt to our own city had an opportunity cost of about $20,000. That is, we technically lost $20,000 by limiting our geographic region. Even if we spent a massive $10,000 on rent and relocation, we still come out ahead by quite a bit. Not to mention, we now have four months worth of new experience and we, if we wanted to, we could just start applying for jobs back in our hometown with a stronger resume. And we could just like potentially start working back in the hometown after four months, just making more money, right? Obviously, every scenario is not gonna work out exactly like this. You just have to look at your scenario and just make sure it makes economic sense. In addition to those economic and monetary benefits, there's a lot of other benefits you can have as well. They're just like kind of hard to measure. If you're living and working in a new city that you wouldn't normally be in, of course, you're going to meet people that you wouldn't have normally met. And you're going to have experiences that you wouldn't have normally had, and it will just kind of help round you out as an individual. It's just kind of hard to measure those things on paper. I've personally taken advantage of the strategy twice. Uh, the first time I really wanted to get a security clearance and it's hard to get those. You have to either join the military or find someone that will sponsor it for you. But I actually ended up finding a job out in Japan that would sponsor me for a clearance. So I, I just moved from Seattle to Japan and I, I got my security clearance. 
and I did meet a bunch of cool people out there. I had some interesting experiences, so not all 100% good, but I did I did get my clearance. I got my experience. I met a lot of people and I made some friends. And it was, overall, it was a pretty good experience. The second time I did this, I moved from Seattle to Hawaii and I lived there for a year actually. And low key, I was already going to move to Hawaii anyway, but this is where I actually ended up breaking into cybersecurity by accident. Not only that, I got to meet a lot of new people and I got to experience an interesting new culture. So if you're considering doing this, like you want to break into some field as soon as you possibly can, there's a few steps that I'd recommend doing to make this strategy as effective as possible. Before you start applying anywhere from an applicant standpoint, you need to become the best version of yourself possible, within reason, of course. How good you are overall as a package will directly affect your ability to get interviews, which in turn directly affects the speed at which you can find your first job. I talk about this a lot in my channel, but everyone kind of has personal stats that look something like this. And you need to raise these all up as much as you can, as economically as possible, and as short as time as you can to kind of like make your application process as efficient as it can possibly be. Of course, you can do a lot of different things to kind of raise these stats up for free using my channel and the rest of the internet for that matter. But I also teach an entry-level IT course and a mid-level cybersecurity course that have both had a lot of success that kind of raise these stats up as fast as possible. So feel free to check those out as well. And then the second thing you need to worry about, you just need enough money to make the move and sustain yourself temporarily while you start working. I'm not gonna get too deep into the personal finance or anything, but you know, just make sure you have a decent enough cushion where you can move and like, you know, be okay, essentially. If I were doing this strategy again as a new person, after kind of raising my stats in step one, I would probably work some kind of temporary job like doing food delivery or Uber or something like this, while also applying outside of my state at the same time. Of course, I'd be applying in my own city at the same time anyway, so if I happen to find a job in my own city, that's like fantastic, but if I found one in a neighboring state or something, at least I would have had a bit of money saved up so I could more easily make that move. This strategy is not necessarily to make a ton of money in the interim because you have to move and all that, but it's more so trying to get experience as soon as you possibly can with the end goal of saving time and money in the long run. I know this is not for everyone, but I highly recommend at least thinking about it. Thanks for watching.